been doing bushcraft for the last seven, eight years. Um, started getting into it uh, after seeing uh, Dick Prennicky in Alone in the Wilderness. That was really inspirational, so that's what really got me started on it. Some of the things I've learned along the way is uh, primitive fire making, anything from bow drill to flint steel or church steel, shelter making, uh, how to procure water all kinds of different ways because you, you can't take a lot of water out, out with you. And that's what Beyond Scouting is really all about is, is being able to get out further into the woods and you know stay out there longer. So the, the, the more you know, the less you need to take, which kind of equates to knowledge doesn't weigh anything. So you can go out, stay longer. So that's some of the things that we're gonna go through that we're gonna cover, so let's go ahead and get started. Good spot. Make a fire. So we'll go ahead and get started. Well, let's go find some some tinder, some kindling, and a little bit of fuel wood. That's the three biggest components. So. Before you even start that, you have to have everything in order. It's almost like uh, cooking a dish. Make sure you have all your ingredients. Seems like a pretty good spot to get some tinder. It's an old dead oak tree, but it's um, been been hit pretty hard by the woodpeckers but some of this stuff you know along the side we've already got a lot of that that's really nice fibrous airy material so we'll just pull some off here and thank Mr. Woodpecker for doing some of our work for us. it up in your hands break it break it a little bit to where you get it really really airy you can just see how dry that is and then we'll make a probably find a little bit of grass dried grass at the tops to do this and put this in uh, on top of the grass and it's almost like making a hamburger bun or a hamburger patty you kind of roll it, roll it in your hand along with the grass and we'll, we'll go and find that, but roll it in your hand to make a, almost like a little bird's nest. So you can see how airy that is and this should work really well. But some of it's a little damp, so I'll put it in my pocket. And your body heat and we'll warm it up and dry it out as we're looking for some of the other supplies and spread it out a little bit in there so as you walk it's ruffling it up for you as well so let's go find some grass down by the down by the water here
Oh, I found a yellow birch down here by the water. And this is this is like the Cadillac tinder. It's still a birch, um, but the the bark on it is extremely paper thin. So we can just pull off any excess. Watch for good sized spiders though, because spiders like to live underneath the flaps. Once in a while you'll get a great big wolf spider about that big if you're not paying attention. These yellow birch, you can tell if you want to zoom in on the bark, it's got this yellowish yellowish bronze color and usually it only grows in these low-lying areas usually in the saddle of you know in between two hills but this stuff is um, it's real similar to like paper birch or river birch sweet birch whatever you want to call it but this is so much lighter but it still has all the oils that regular birch does but you can tell by you know usually you can tell the yellow birch by the, the bronze you know bronze kind of yellowish color and if you're really hard up for water these actually will will hold quite a bit in the spring throughout the year. I mean, you could get up to a gallon of water out of here if you tapped it. But this will make excellent, I mean, we'll rough this up and this will be, that will be extremely good. That's almost better than what we found up, up the hill. That's perfect. Let's steal a little bit more so I make sure I got enough. But you never want to cut it. You don't want to peel it off. You'll kill the tree. Just pull a little bit of excess off. It's almost like small ribbons. So we'll add that to our tinder pile to get roughed up in the pocket and dry it out. Now the next is just get some kindling, some uh, and a few bigger pieces to have it all staged and ready to go. So as you're going along, um, looking for kindling, you want it to be small diameter, about the size of your pinky. I mean, once you get the flame out of the tinder in the bird's nest, you'll have uh, kindling to get the, the fuel really going. Then, then you can get some bigger pieces and we'll, we'll find some of that on the way up, preferably some hardwood. Um, it'll burn nice and hot and long. But this, you always want to make sure when you're getting kindling, you want it dry. You don't want it laying on the ground, like the section laying on the ground. You want to find something that's up off the ground and dead. And probably the biggest indicator is you want to be able to hear this sound to where it just pops extremely nice. So we'll pull some of this off and I mean, if it's, if it's giving you, you know, where it's, it's bending and it's stretching and it's still sticking and you gotta twist it, it's not, not good kindling. I mean, they're not poisonous. They don't have the diamond shaped head. I'm sure if you looked at their eyeballs, they wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't have the cat like eyes. It's a pretty good indicator of a poison snake. And in Wisconsin, there's only two of them. So, and usually they're down by the mouth of the Mississippi southwest corner. So, watch your step. Always just keep your eye out, eye out for other tinder sources that will make it easy that way you're not making multiple trips out so we made one trip out and we'll find you know 90 percent of what we're looking for so but this is an old burned out tree got hit by lightning a lot of acorns in here too so i imagine this is uh somebody's home that's in the hillside but we're going to borrow his his front door 
because you can see that it's all of this charcoal and this I'll cut some of this off and we'll we'll put that on the top of the birds birds nest for the tinder and it'll be like a coal extender so when you do get the coal going you can put it in here and this will extend the life quite a bit um, I mean it's it's already charred wood so sorry buddy but we'll take half your patio God, hungry. Skip breakfast this morning, trying to look around somewhere where there's maybe something to eat. Early spring, usually you find something, you know, budding out. And what's, what's that? That's a, oh, it's a granola tree, sweet. These are really rare, rarer than finding a albino squatch. You can see the granola bars are growing out of the, the crotch of the branches. And actually this one's even more rare because it's it's a hybrid. It's got jerky growing out of this one right here. Just pull that lightly. Ah, pull that lightly out of there. And the sheath that it comes with is is real, real sensitive. So you got to be careful when you open this. And oh, look at that. There's you don't find that every day out in the woods. our bowl and uh, a thin sapling works the best some people say to make it out of a rigid pole I, I prefer to shape it a little bit and make it into something a little more springy uh, you lose you have the chance of the the ropes slipping around the spindle when it can flex but I've always had good luck this way and um, it keeps the bowl quite a bit further away from the spindle so you're not wrapping your hands on it or anything like that so we're gonna take this guy down and and shape them out into a tiny little bowl and usually you only want it to be about uh, as long as from your armpit to your hand anything longer than that's kind of counterproductive so we'll get started here we'll just take that usually you don't want too many knots in it but uh, it's not super super crucial all I'm gonna do is take you know one side and make a fade make a you know the belly of the the bow and just make a, a fade on this side and a fade on this side so I'll just shape it out here. And it's good when you're whittling wood, if you got a heavy headed uh, hatchet to kind of choke up on it a little bit. Um, this one I got really tires out your arm just because it's real top heavy and it's all one metal piece, but may, it'll do you wonders on your arm. This is pretty springy already. So I shaped up the bowl and all we did you can see is kind of make a fade on this side and this side and I've been flexing it a little bit to give it some bend that way when we tie our tie our uh, cordage on here um, you'll be able to bend it you know like this and the spindle will stay off of off your handhold part so the first first step I do it and tying up a bowstring and you can tie it pretty much anyway it's just a matter of preference but figured I'd throw in a cool little knot it's called a bowline Boyer's knot um, and here's your standing end and your working end so you flip it flip it over so your standing ends on the top um, you can do it the other way around it doesn't much matter you'll get the gist of it once you practice it a little bit but you'll have the standing end over the top of the working end and uh, picture it as a snake the snake goes down the hole around the tree which is the working end and then back down the hole and you can kind of see it went you know down through up and under and then you have to set it because um, you want this loop to be as small as you can so I found the best way to set it is to just pull on that that standing end you can see it will suck up all the slack and then you can or dress it I'm sorry and then you can set it and this, what this knot does is make, 
makes a fixed loop on the end that won't it won't slide not like a slip knot so it won't loosen up it's just a fixed loop on the end so uh, what we'll do is I put I always put a couple notches in the top just for the um, just for the rope to sit in you can kind of see it on both sides just some and they don't have to be perfect it's not a science you're just getting a working bow so I'll put my bow line up here and then you just simply bend it just a hair just bend it a hair to where it's pretty taut and then get that one loop around there so it's pretty tight and then I like to finish it off with uh, I call them Chinese handcuffs um, it's like a constrictor type constrictor type knot and the idea is uh, the Chinese used to uh, tie people's hands up like these or use them as handcuffs and you just make you go down the length of the bow until you look like you're about to run out as you come back up here and then go back across itself and this isn't perfect but um, go back across itself and then just kind of finish it off with a half hitch and this will be enough to and it's easily easy enough to untie it technically you do two half hitches but I don't want to have to worry about untying it but the idea is that when when pressure is pulled on this end these constrict against each other and tighten up around the whatever you're tying it to so I mean you could almost tie a you know a standing piece of you know tree if you wanted to drag a great big log through the woods you could tie up the very end with this and drag it out so, and uh, we went through and made the fireboards. Um, I got a couple different ones, uh, some spruce and uh, basswood. Basswood is probably the best. It's the softest. And the way you can kind of, when you're looking for candidates for wood, you want the fireboard and the spindle to be the same kind, soft. And you want the handhold um, to be hardwood. So, when you're looking at it, a good indication if until you get into identifying trees and knowing which tree is what. Uh, most uh, soft trees are going to be uh, willow, basswood, and that, mind you, this is you know kind of the northern part of the United States. But basswood, um, willow, poplar is a last resort, or aspen, any kind of aspen. Um, I'm trying to think of a few other white cedar is usually pretty good. And then the hand handhold you want made out of. You want it made out of hardwood because that way it's not going to end up drilling up into the top because you want all the friction down here. You don't want none up at the top. So you make the handhold out of uh, hardwood and I'll show you that. But, but this is really soft and, and if you don't know anything about trees you can kind of see, I'll, I'll give you, you know, look close when you stick your fingernail in and if you can make a good size dent, it's, it's usually a pretty good candidate for for a fireboard and spindle. Same with the spruce, but if it's you know something hardwood where you can barely get your nail in there if you go along the grain and you can barely get that in there, then it's gonna be too hard. I mean, you can do it. You can do it technically with any kind of wood, but soft is the easiest. It smokes quicker and... So we got the bow strung up, got our handhold. Uh, I made this earlier and kind of drilled out a spot already for it for the top. And got the fireboard here. And the, the magic ingredient for this handhold is you want some type of lubrication up here. Um, you can use anything from green plant material that will work, but you got to keep applying it. But in a pinch, it, it'll do the job. Um, one thing that I found that works, you know, better than like bearing grease is it, when you're out here, there's not much in the way of lubricants for the most part. You can try to rub the end of the spindle you know, on the sides of your nose and in your hair, but that takes a couple days shower to make it even, without showering, to make it worthwhile, and I'm not about that either, so. Um, one day I was uh, thinking about it, and it was acorns. Any kind of nut that lives in your area, or, you know, that grows in your area or whatnot, especially up here is, is tons of oak, so there's acorns everywhere. Um, we even have hazelnuts and basswood. They produce a small little nut that you could use, and I found that that makes a really excellent varnish in here so we're actually underneath 
you know, all mostly oaks. So there's got to be some, some kind of uh, acorn on the ground here in the brush somewhere. There's one more. So I'll try it with this. See how this works? Well, I, I know it works good. It's saved me quite a bit of time and it makes the stroking way more easier, less friction, all the friction's on at the bottom of the board where you want it. So what I'll do here is just split this open without cutting myself. And you see there's this one still pretty good. No weevil beetles in there. Um, usually when you see a little hole in them, weevil beetles got in there and most of it's probably mush. So we'll take a piece of this. I'll save this. Because you, you will have to reapply it time to time, but Works pretty good. Then we'll just smash this in there a little bit. Try not to lose any. Smash that a little bit. It's my spindle, so I'll use uh, the spindle. You want it a little bit longer than this. This one's a little bit short. But you want this top a little bit. Uh, sharp at a point just because you want as less friction as you possibly could get at the top to make it easier but what I'll do is and then the fatter end will be you know down here and you can kind of flatten this off just a hair so it has a little bit of roughness but I'll just take that end and mash up some of this in there and it should varnish it'll almost like varnish the wood and you'll see that here <laughs> actually I got a got a can of varnish sitting behind a the stump there not really <laughs> get this in there and then I like to really mash it up in there done got our spindle now we just gotta put a fresh notch in this fireboard and kind of flatten it out the best you can and then we'll just put a small notch and kind of put it in the middle this is kind of a small fireboard but we'll put it in the middle here and you just Pry up a couple of chunks. Just make a you know, smaller type, small impression for it to get started. Otherwise, it'll just get squirrely and go off the end. here and the last piece of the last piece of the puzzle is is to have something underneath here to catch it you don't want to put your tinder under there right away I guess you could if that's what you want to catch it with but um, I'll pull this piece off this uh, right underneath like that and once this builds up and I'll get this hole started because you want to get a, at least a, an impression in there to where so your spindle won't go uh, flying out of the hole so I'll, 
I'll start the hole, burn it a little bit so it's nice and depressed so it'll ride in there nice. But do so always make sure your your tip, you're not doing the wrong end. You have a heck of a time if you try to use your lubricated end. That's small. But all I do is put wrap it around here, grab the tip and kind of roll it a little bit. And then get it down there about like this. Some people like to spin it when you're using just a rigid pole. Mine's bendy, so I don't have to worry about it. Some people spin it so the, you can see my spindle's on the inside. A lot of people spin it so it's on the outside. But that's only for, you know, if, if you're really close. That way you're not knocking your hand. But we'll see if we can get this started. So always put your left foot have this to catch it so that'll keep it dry enough so you put your left foot on the fireboard so it doesn't spin and you kind of want to lean forward so once you get this we'll redo this here so you have your spindle and you put it in the impression that you made and we'll just start burning the hole but this will give you an idea That'll be enough to to start it so you got just a little impression um, so what we'll do now is set the notch so what I like to do depending on where the hole ends up sometimes you get it closer to the edge sometimes you don't I want it to go all off the front uh, not towards me so I'll just shave shave some of this off to where it gets a little bit closer to the end So that way you don't have to go down too deep. And then what I'll do is I'll make a pie shaped notch. Everybody likes pie, right? But you want the notch to go just a little bit, not quite to the center. Um, I have bad luck with that. So I just put it a little bit into the where your cir circle started. So I'll just put a, a little bit of notch. Kind of mark it 45 degree angle i mean people get technical with it but as long as it's enough to where the dust that you're it will go down into this notch and accumulate so i mark that off and i'll just You don't want to get too far into it when you first make the notch because if you get too far into it it's going to this will go grow in diameter as you get deeper into the wood so I just make it so it just touches it but one thing to one thing to note though is that you want this notch go all the way through the bottom because it'll, what will happen is as you're getting deeper and as it's starting to spin and smoke and do black dust mm -hmm. out of here, it'll drop down in this and it'll actually compact on top. And that's all that hot dust will compact and that'll be what forms your coal. And then if you're lucky, you can build a, <laughs> get a fire out of it. But before we do this, we're gonna get our bird's nest ready, that grass and stuff that we got earlier. So. This is nice, nice, light, and airy. I'm just gonna rub it up in my hands a little bit more to get it a little bit more. And then I just treat it like making a 
Make it a hamburger patty. I stick my thumbs in the middle and just kind of wrap, wrap everything around it. And what you end up getting is similar to a bird's nest. But you want to make sure it's somewhat hard in here in the middle. Um, you don't want it real light and airy because what will happen is your coal will break apart and fall in between. You won't get that surface area. So I like a like a pinch with my fingers and thumbs on it. You just make a bird's nest. So that'll be what's what's ready to once you do get the coal on your little board here, you'll get it to where it's glowing pretty good, and then you'll drop it in here and we'll actually blow that in to where it'll actually start a flame. So, so having this ready is paramount. <laughs> so we'll put some of that in there, and then earlier we got some of this uh, yellow birch, because here's paper birch. Everybody knows that one. If you have any in your area, you know what it looks like. Um, well, maybe you don't. <laughs> so, paper birch is going to be, it's going to have a real white, you know, uh, white face to it, but they call it paper birch because it, it peels off so nice. And birch has oils in it that will even light when it's wet. So once we do get that flame going, I'm going to use this to keep it going and then start throwing some of the uh, kindling on top of it so we can get a good sized fire. I already got the house built. Um, an important thing about fire is just, Heat travels up. Can't put flat boards or flat sticks on top of each other that are wet. It's got to be dry. Uh, you can either do a teepee style or, you know, like the log cabin. But as long as there's air um, and it's dry on the bottom, it should be good. But this is paper birch, which we'll use once we get the fire. But then there's that yellow birch and some of that other um, fibrous bark material that we got off the tree that the woodpecker helped us out with but we'll take just a hair of this and put it in the center of the bird's nest just so it, just to help it out. Make our chances of getting a fire going a lot better. So let's break all this up. Put this in my little bird's nest. And we'll put the coal right in there and Got some extra stuff just in case. Make sure I squatch. Squatch! Acorn just fell by me. You can only deduce that it's one of those dang albino squatches that I was talking about earlier when we found that granola tree.
Well, I made one, made a fire, uh, most primitive way, you know, that I know of, bow and drill, you can do it hand drill, I guess, too, but the biggest thing about fire is that it's, it's everything. I mean, it's, it's probably one of the most important things if you're going to spend any, any, amount of, any amount of time out in the woods, uh, three, four day trips or even longer, um, fire, not only does it lift your spirits at night, keep you warm. You can't cook any food or fish that you catch without fire. You can't purify water without fire. I mean, it's it's essential to be able to be able to make a fire as many many different ways as you can. Now, do you do this every time you go out? Probably not. But it's a good good idea to practice it. Good idea to know how to do it in case you know the need ever does arise. But uh, going forward, we'll we'll show you some more ways, um, multiple ways to to start fires that are a lot easier than this. granola tree and it must be a hybrid because it's growing jerky out of its <laughs> it's a really really rare um, rarer than squatches as a matter of fact they'll actually grow granola bars out of it <laughs> and this one I think is a hybrid because it's also growing jerky out of it God damn. almost the jerky yeah. is probably the worst <laughs> This must be a hybrid because it's growing. <laughs>